So back in 1979, Texas Instruments officially entered the personal computer market with the TI-99-4. And again, this is a machine that I have never had any personal experience with in my life, but thanks to Vintage Geek, today is the day. So Texas Instruments back in 1979 officially entered the personal computer market with the TI-99-4 and later on in 81 they came out with the TI-99-4A which had the improved keyboard and things that made it generally more usable. This computer is noteworthy in the sense that it is one of the first 16-bit computers to hit the world and this is one of those machines that I never had any chance to play with as a kid. Now apparently a lot of people did because this particular computer got marked down a lot price-wise. In fact to the point where the CEO of Commodore got very upset that they were outpacing sales on the VIC-20 which they had just come out with by basically reducing the prices to very very low levels for the time. But the advantage of this was that it got a lot of people into computers that may not have been otherwise and I've been really curious about this hardware ever since I first saw it in a magazine. What we're going to do today is look at this system a little bit closer, look at all the pieces that we've acquired for the museum. This was actually from someone's personal collection. Not all of it of course, we have a few pieces from here, a few pieces from there. We want to take a look at each part that we have, what parts of the system that we have ready to go and see if we can build a full working TI-99 system, maybe test a couple of pieces of software and who knows, maybe we'll even write a program. It's all right here on Vintage Geek, stick around. So let's start with the computer itself. This is the Texas Instruments TI-99 4A computer. One of the most recognizable features of this is of course the chrome finish. Now the keyboard itself, this is obviously the 4A, so it's the 81 and later version. The earlier TI-99 4 had a different style keyboard that people didn't like, but that was pretty common as we found with these old computers. This one seems pretty usable, I haven't done any work on it yet, but the keys have a nice feel to them, and they feel like regular keys, they're spaced pretty well. There's no number pad and it's pretty compact. You'll see that a lot of the real estate on the physical computer is taken up by this kind of ramp that goes into the uh, cartridge slot as most of the software that was for the Texas Instruments systems were cartridge based. We have a few of those cartridges so we're going to try one of those probably today. We also have uh, the port on the side where you can plug in additional peripherals. I assume that is where we're going to be plugging in our speech interface and the expansion unit that we'll get to in just a moment. Let's take a look at the underside of this really quick. Not really much to see here. A little bit of information about the uh, computer itself. On the front here, you see we've got an LED indicator and a sliding power switch of sorts. We've also got a, a legend across the top of the keyboard. It looks like uh, you could probably customize this. There may be different software that has different overlays for that, make it a little bit easier to use. On the back, You've got a DB9 connection, which I'm going to assume is joysticks, but I won't know for sure until I look at the quick start guide. We've also got this port here, which is the power connector. It goes to the power adapter. And over here, we've got a DIN plug that looks like it's going to be for our video connection, which we have a standard composite cable that came with this unit. As far as the computer goes itself, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's lightweight, it's easy to move around. It'll be interesting to see what this can do. So here we have an original TI-99-4 monitor. Now this one's interesting because I had not seen a TI-99 monitor that looks like this. I've seen the later ones that was in the advertising materials and it was more of a chrome finish similar to the actual computer. But this one looks earlier and especially because it doesn't have the 4A designation on it. This may have been one of the earlier models. Now this particular monitor itself is really just a Zenith television. In fact, the back plate of the monitor shows Zenith. They must have made this for Texas Instruments and then allowed them to put a custom plate and overlay over the front. I actually had this television service. The picture is working quite well now, so I'm anxious to see how this uh, ends up working. So this is the TI-99 4A expansion unit. This came with the uh, collection of TI parts that we got, and it looks like this is actually a multi-function device. So it plugs in to the TI-99. It's got this uh, long ribbon connector with kind of a cartridge at the end of it that I assume is going to plug in to the side here. I think that this actually has an opening latch on the back so we can pop open the top and see what's inside of it. It looks like it has a total of eight slots where you could put peripheral cards. We've got three cards inserted. We've got the flex cable interface, which I assume is basically what makes all of this backplane go through a single ribbon back to the computer. Then we have a 32K by 8 memory expansion which I assume is just going to give us more RAM capability inside the machine. Over here in slot 8, 
we have the disc controller, and there is a floppy disk unit in the machine that you could see from the front of it. Now, I think this disk controller is connected internally to that drive, and that this edge connector on the back is probably if you wanted to use the disc separately from the rest of the cards. My guess is that with the flex cable interface, it gives you access to the disc controller as well. It's also interesting to know in the expansion system that each one of the eight cards is represented by a plastic cutout in the front of the unit. And at the bottom of these, it looks like it might be an LED indicator. So I'm guessing that this gives you some kind of status of what is actually on and online when the unit is powered up. So here we have the Texas Instruments speech synthesizer module, which I assume can actually make the unit talk. It looks like it passes through the port that would connect peripherals. So on one end, we have a connector that looks like it goes into the computer itself. And then if we flip this over and we look at the other side, it's actually a socket for the same thing. So I think this can be used as a pass-through. You can basically plug it in and then plug other things into this. It has an opening compartment on the top here, and I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be for, other than make it look like it's very hungry. Um, um. So we have a pair of Texas Instruments joysticks that were actually in the original box that came with the system. Nothing too spectacular here, nothing too unexpected. It does look like they have a return to center function and a fire button. Very squishy. There is no click to that at all. So the cable for this joystick is kind of the most interesting part. Both the joysticks go to the same plug. So there's actually two cables. So I guess that was a way of saving another I.O. connector on the device. So a couple things worth noting right away about the Texas Instruments experience. Clearly they had some people working for them that had a little bit more in mind with user interface. This opening screen looks fantastic. The color band across it shows all the colors the system's capable of. It's using the full width and height of the screen, and it looks very, very clean. The graphics look good. The monitor looks good. There's not a lot of noise in the picture. I'll say I'm pretty impressed. All right, so I thought we would do a quick program just to make sure the sound is working, whereas we can tell if the video is working very easily, it's a little bit more difficult with the sound since we don't automatically have a sound coming out of the computer. So I thought this would be a good first experience experiment. So let's try typing in this program. All right, press 1 for TI Basic. Love the menu system. Again, it's very intuitive. All right, we've got our program now, so hopefully this will produce some sounds. We've got sound and we've got video, so things are looking pretty good so far. Now see, I really appreciate that. Once again, some people in their UI department were pretty smart about things. Instead of just giving you a syntax error, it actually says, can't do that. <laughs> Something I learned the hard way about the Texas Instruments TI-99 is that if you happen to hit the function and quit button while your program is running, it definitely restarts the entire unit and loses the program. So all that work you just did to type out is, is now gone. So I will not be doing that again. So I'm not sure exactly how the speech interface module accessory is supposed to work for the TI-99 4A, but there are references to it in the book that tell you what the commands are. So I'm gonna try putting in some of those commands and let's see if we can get this thing talking. So it turns out in order to use the speech synthesizer, you have to actually use an extended basic cartridge. Luckily we have that cartridge, so I'm going to give that a try now. We have a second option, TI Extended Basic. All right. <laughs> All right, it looks like we've got a working speech module here. That's pretty exciting. Now we need to test the expansion system. I've gone ahead and plugged it into the physical machine using the large ribbon cable that came with it. And I'm plugging it in through the speech synthesizer because that looks like it's a pass-through device. I'm gonna power this on. It's kind of loud, huh? The number eight is lit up on the expansion system, which should be the disk drive controller card. The disk did spin up. So I was interested to see if I could read the contents of a floppy disk just to see what the directory is. Now, one of the shortcomings of this particular system is that there is no directory command. Apparently you have to actually write a program to be able to kind of iterate through the disk and tell us everything that's on it. So I followed the instructions in the book, just verbatim copied a program that's supposed to give us the listing of the disk. Then I saved this program onto the disk. So at the very least, if there was nothing else on it, hopefully this will come up in the listing. I've got the code done for this. So we're gonna try to run it and see if we get any results. So after a lot 
lot of painstaking research through the book and trying to understand how to simply open a file and finding all these different parameters for how to open files. It turns out the open command is to open a file for writing, basically, on the disk. But there wasn't an actual command for load, even though there was a save command, so that was very confusing to me, until I found one little note in the entire book that says how to do it. You use the command old. Who came up with that? You use the command old to just run an old program, I guess? I don't know. This is uh, really interesting. Let's say record 7. Apparently this just has some sample data, but it is reading and writing from the disk in real time. Well, we've proven that the disk drive works. We can uh, write and read files from it by using that sweet old command that uh, I now know about and will never forget again, I'm sure. So one of the great things about the TI-99 from what I've read and what I've found online is that they did have a lot of prepackaged software available. We're going to take a look at one of the early educational pieces of software right now. This one's called Beginning Grammar, and it is on a cartridge. We're going to see what this looks like on the ti 99 a all right, we're going to hit number two for grammar. Oh, that is a sweet school bus right there. Nouns, verbs, adverbs, and more. Lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. Lolly, 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 got some adverbs here. <laughs> Ooh, let's see, we got a lot of choices here. We can go places with nouns, we can do a little verb lift, pronoun, posters, adjectives, restaurant, adverb attraction, and prepositions and conjunctions. Well, let's go to adjectives restaurant. I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun. Nice. An adjective is a word used to describe a noun or pronoun. Adjectives often tell how many, which one, what kind. Read each item in the menu, find the adjective, and type it in. All right. Green. I do like the reward system here. I'm already getting a jaunty tune every time I get one right. This is great. Roast with new potatoes. New. Cheese on large hamburger. Sounds delicious. <laughs> All right, let's see what that looks like. Oh, sweet. A verb is a word that shows an action. Pressing the space bar moves the line from word to word. When the line is under the verb, press enter. Yes. Everything is a hard yes for me on this game. Let's see what happens if I get one wrong. <laughs> Just jumps into <laughs> saying, this is why you're wrong. Ooh, tricky one. Nice. Honestly though, what a great little game. It looks good, it's very simple. I'm sure kids could learn a lot from it. I like any game that gives you a reward that has a little song and dance, it's always a lot of fun. So I thought maybe we'd try a non-educational title from the folks at Texas Instruments. And uh, this one's called Car Wars, which already sounds great, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna pop this one in and see what this one looks like. Oh, it's like Pac-Man, but cars. <laughs> It's already starting out solid. All right, so let's see. I don't know which one of these joysticks is which because they're both plugged into the same connector. So let's just see what happens. Ooh, we got creeping, fast, and flying. I mean, let's go with creeping. <laughs> uh, computer car speed, I guess, late. I don't know. <laughs> let's press any key to begin. Maybe it's not that one. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, you just never quite know exactly how it's going to respond. That's the only problem I see. No! The up is a tricky one. That one, it really doesn't want to move up. It seems to be okay with the down, left, and right. Let's see, I should be able to do... Okay, that works. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, the up is very problematic. I like it though. It's a, it's an ingenious little game. And also it does show off the TI's ability to use sprites. The TI-99 was actually one of the first systems that it could actually use a sprite from what I've read, where basically you can have, you know, a little sprite character and it can just move around freely on the screen, which is pretty important to game development when you think back on the history of games. And it does show it off pretty well in this little simple Car Wars game. I have to admit it is kind of enjoyable. So I think for the last sample game we're going to test for the TI-99 4A, it's got to be Munchman. Just the cover of this uh, looks, I don't know, it's like Pac-Man, but kind of evil. It says, four cunning Hunus are in hot pursuit of your Munchman while he races to an Energizer to change the attack. Can he make it to safety or does his fate lie in the mouth of the Hunus? I don't know what any of that means, but I'm about to find out. Ooh, nice. Munch Man's even moving on screen. This is really fancy. I like it. Ooh, it's 3D. Cool. I mean, I think I'm ready. It says press any key, but... Well, I really rocked that one out with 120 score for the first time. I do really like the uh, the 3D maze look. That's pretty cool. Honestly, this system is pretty impressive. For being 16K and a low-priced unit, it looks good. The up does not work. Oh, no. <laughs> ah. Oh, you can't. You can eat them? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. Okay. It's unfortunate that the up movement on the joystick doesn't really work because I feel like the joystick would be easier than the keyboard. But in any case, it, it definitely is a fun game and I think I could probably learn how to get a little bit better at this over time. Well, I honestly had a lot of fun playing with the TI-99 4A. I have to say for Texas Instruments that this was actually a really nice little computer setup, especially for a low price point. It seems to have a lot of features. I love the fact that it has the uh, speech synthesizer module that we got to play with a little bit earlier. The basic commands seem about on par with other basic systems at the time. It's a little bit weird that you have to put in the extended basic cartridge to actually do some of those functions. Keyboard wise, it wasn't terrible. The keys are a little little close together and the layout is a little bit congested but uh, I did get the hang of it and overall I'd have to say it was a pretty good experience the games that were made for it were good playable games I love the educational software great for kids certainly this system is fully functional we have a fully functional peripheral system the card cage and the floppy drive all seems to be working components included seem to be working except that up function on the joystick which is a little bit problematic overall it's ready for the vintage geek museum and we're going to be proud to have it on display there. Hey, if you like what we're doing here on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. It's going to help us a lot as we go forward. We appreciate your support and your comments. If you have any memories of the TI-99, if you had one of these as a kid, we'd love to hear from you as well. That's going to do it for this edition of Vintage Geek. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned for more great videos here on the YouTube channel at Vintage Geek. <laughs>